testimony has wrapped in the trial of the man who killed 10 people in the Boulder King Supers. The jury is expected to return to court Friday morning, where the judge will read their instructions, followed by closing arguments. Meaning after years of delays, the jury could have the case by tomorrow afternoon. Now, over the past few weeks, families of those killed sat through painful testimony. The question jurors must decide if the shooter's mental state should absolve him of legal responsibility. The director of behavioral health at Advent Health, Porter. Brad, thanks so much for being here. You're now, welcome. we've spoken with you on the prosecution's arguments. The last yes. few days, it's been the defense right. making their arguments, presenting their witnesses. A lot was talked about in recent days in terms of the suspect's schizophrenia and the voices that the suspect heard. So let's take a listen. We just were never fully able to get information or an understanding as to what it was about voices yelling that made him think that that's what voices wanted. So we ended up in a situation where we lack evidence to suggest that at the time of the crime, his mental health symptoms made him incapable of distinguishing right from wrong. However, we also weren't fully able to rule out that maybe there was some sort of psychotic process going on. I want to ask you, in your opinion, does the lack of clarity spoken to there on the voices, the possible psychotic episode, speak more towards sanity or insanity, or is it somewhere in the middle? So I think we know for certain he has a mental illness, but I think that testimony indicates that it was not the psychosis that caused him to commit the murders. And ultimately, that's what what the defense would want the jury yes, to believe. Yes, abs absolutely. So, and also this week, the defense called the suspect's family to the stand as witnesses. They spoke to their cultural approach to mental health and how the suspect's schizophrenia went untreated for years. The longer you wait before treating a mental illness, the more damage you may be doing to your brain. Now, of course, we want to clarify mental illness, very different from insanity. But in your opinion, does untreated mental illness get closer to the argument that the defense is trying to make of insanity? So untreated mental illness would certainly cause one to have more symptoms, would cause one to have more difficulty getting treated. It doesn't necessarily point in either direction. There can be Millions of people who have a psychiatric condition and they don't commit crimes. Even untreated, it Even doesn't untreated. automatically it does mean not automatically. one thing. It does not. So now we move forward and we look forward uh, with the question of insanity. When, what do you think both the prosecution and the defense need to present during tomorrow's closing arguments? So the defense needs to indicate that he has a psychiatric condition and because of that psychiatric condition, he committed murder. He d wasn't clear about the consequences of his actions. He didn't understand what he was doing. In the prosecution, certainly I think all will agree he, this person does have a psychiatric condition. However, that was not the reason why he committed the murders. And so before we go, though, I do want to ask, how difficult is it to get a not guilty by reason of insanity jury decision? Extremely difficult. There's only about 1% of cases that defendants are found not guilty by reason of insanity. So it's a hard, hard case to prove. And one that, of course, we will keep our eyes on as the jury potentially gets the case starting tomorrow. Brad, thank you so much. We You're really welcome. appreciate the conversation. We'll be relying on your expertise as we move forward. And again, closing statements and jury instructions will begin Friday morning at 8 o'clock. We will keep you updated on air and online. You can find gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage on denver7.com.